Welcome back to Tech Visa. This is episode number seven. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel for all the latest in Australian immigration updates. And we've got another special guest on the mic today. Not only is he an extremely well-renowned migration professional and the co-founder of the job platform Work in Oz, but he is the self-proclaimed sexiest man in migration, Chris Carmen. Welcome. That is an intro. Um, the self-claim bit, that was supposed to be internal. I can't believe Emily's let you into that one. That was always a joke. No, Chris, thanks for taking the time to sit down with us today. I appreciate it. As you might be aware, I'm the community lead here at Tech Visa. I spend a lot of time out and about with founders, business owners, tech professionals within the startup ecosystem. And when I'm out and about, I find one of the most common questions I get from either candidates in Australia who are currently holding a visa or potential candidates applying for jobs from overseas is when applying for a job, how do I know if the company are willing to sponsor me? And music to your ears, I refer them to the Work in Oz platform. I'm a massive advocate. I find it aesthetically pleasing and user-friendly. Um, so for the viewers out there who are not aware of what the Work in Oz platform is, can you give them an overview as well as a bit of insight into your motivation behind building the platform and, um, and how it can potentially benefit them? In a nutshell, it's a destination site for Australian recruiters or employers to be able to showcase their opportunities um, to international talent and international talent being migrant workers. Uh, be able to find those opportunities and apply for them. Been something in my mind for quite a while when I was in private practice, like most uh, practitioners can tell a person's options within about five minutes asking a series of questions. And at the end of it, you normally say, well, look, you haven't really got an independent option. The majority of the time they'd actually need to be sponsored by an employer. Uh, and I'd say, look, you, you go off, find yourself an employer that's willing to sponsor, uh, come back, and I can assist you in the, in the company. Uh, the next words out their mouth without fail would be, where do I go to find an employer that's willing to sponsor me? And so I never had anywhere to direct them. So that was very much a motivation because now, obviously, migration agents have the ability to send them to Work in Oz. Um, work in Oz has various different tools. Uh, within it that um, uh, really is uh, assisting um, uh, migration advice profession with, say, labour market testing, which we'll probably cover later in a little bit more detail. Um, but it's also got on the front face uh, a little blue globe that gives job seekers um, uh, the confidence that when they're actually going to apply for a job or they're looking at a, a vacancy, uh, that that particular job uh, is from an employer that would support their um, uh, their employment as an international um, uh, worker. Um, so that's the main premise behind it. And obviously, we built it all on video as well, because for the last you know, 25 years, employers and recruiters, they've been really using text and imagery to try and sell the job vacancies. Um, and realistically, you've got to be able to communicate in the same medium that people are consuming content. Um, and, you know, that's video nowadays. Um, so, you know, this as well as I do, uh, especially, you know, I'm millennial, just, just edged in there on millennial, you're Gen Z. So, you know, we are consuming content in the way that we feel comfortable, which is normally visual or listening over reading. Sort of touched on from the candidate side of things. Now, from a business recruitment perspective, how's the platform different? And why would businesses use it over, say, Seek or LinkedIn or other job promotion platforms that are currently out there and relatively well established? Look at where it sits in the marketplace. Obviously, Seek is the dominant um, uh, job board that's out there at the moment. Um, you know, in their 25-year history, they've got the most amount of job advertisements that are being posted at the moment. But in stark contrast, um, you know, they've probably got the lowest job application rates that are actually coming through in that 25-year history. Um, we're really focusing on that international um, uh, talent pool. So in Australia, at any one time, you know, 1.9 to 2.1 million temporary residents. Um, and as we know it, you know, since borders have been closed between December 2019 to December 2021, we had a net loss of 416,000 people. Um, but the real story is we actually lost 1.5 million. The majority of those are coming out of the workplace at, you know, a various level, whether it was you know, highly skilled, skilled, you know, semi-skilled or unskilled. Um, so, you know, we don't make enough Australians at the moment to fill the vacancies. I mean, I, I've tried, I've got a six and an eight year old, but they're standing next to useless at the moment for the next 15 years before we can get them into the workforce. So, you know, we should always be looking to Australians to fill roles. We should always be looking to upskill Australians or cross-skill Australians. But again, that does take time. 
Um, so the international uh, talent pool is, is really the biggest talent pool to draw from. And that's what we're really sort of pushing out there. Um, and for us, you know, we've been actively marketing in the UK and Ireland. Um, and uh, we've been on the side of buses and bus shelters in Bel like Birmingham, Belfast. We've been radio campaigns. We've been over a thousand venues uh, in London and, and Dublin. And that's now bringing, you know, literally thousands of um, applications through on the platform a month which is which is great so employers why should they use it well it gives them the ability to access that talent pool we're giving them tools to be able to communicate not just only in text and imagery but with video as well um, for the larger employers where they've got multiple vacancies we can give them their own netflix style video job board that can act as a landing site um, for their career campaigns or the job campaigns um, uh, we got the ability now through our network, we've integrated with government technology such as Workforce Australia uh, and also other stakeholder and industry job boards. Um, so when you post on the platform, it multi-posts out to Workforce Australia without needing, you know, uh, um, a director's ID or to actually physically engage with that platform, which can be a bit clunky. Um, and tick those boxes uh, for the distribution of labour market testing requirements. Um, so it's ticking that box for the compliance bit, not just compelling job advertisements uh, and the tools to do that, but the tools to be able to do that compliantly as well. Um, so, yeah, I suppose really um, those are the real reasons why you'd use this. Um, now we're sort of uh, really focusing our efforts on uh, a lot of the domestic uh, need as well, um, because, again, we've got 2.1 million temporary residents here at any one time. And the workforce is around about 13, 14 million people. Um, so by posting on a platform as an employer or a recruitment consultant, you're actually posting simultaneously to both the domestic and the international labor market. Okay. I feel like something that you brushed over pretty quickly and is quite a painful process for businesses is labor market testing. So can you elaborate a little bit more about the ease of use through the Working Oz platform? Because I personally used it to post a test run of labor market testing just to see sort of how it works. If we do refer it on to our customers that we do have, what does it mean for them? Um, I've seen both sides of it now. Can you just talk us through, I guess, the process of posting labor market testing through the Working Oz platform versus just, just normally posting <laughs> labor market testing ads? You know, it was probably the biggest pain in migration agents' life, really. It's, um, it, it sounds quite simple because, and, you know, the concept's actually quite solid. You know, the concept was brought in by um, the Labour government in 2013, and it's basically to protect uh, Australians. So that Australians have the ability to apply for jobs first before they're released to overseas nationals. That's kind of the premise behind it. And then actually having a minimum requirement within there um, so that any Australian that is looking for roles can actually fully understand the role, which completely makes sense, especially in this current environment where it's candidate driven. You know, you can't just expect to just throw up rubbish onto a job site and expect to get a candidate flow. You've got to work harder. It's not what it's in it for the employer. It's actually what can you do for the candidate and what's in it for them. Um, so again, when you actually look at it, it's actually quite sensible. The problem came when it was the, um, the requirements to have it on Workforce Australia. And I can see why that integration is required because you've got out of work Australians that, you know, job, uh, agencies and so on that assisting them through Workforce Australia to get back into the employment. But I can't see many software development engineers being, you know, needing or out of work really well. You know, maybe they are, but, you know, I don't really see them going to Centrelink. Um, you know, they'd be pretty, um, uh, it would be pretty easy for them to get a role. Um, and I think that this is where the government's being a bit sensible about what they're uh, doing with the future approach with this three tier system. You know, those highly skilled roles won't really require labor market testing, in my view. That's a sensible move. Um, but then when you come down those two other streams with the normal stream and, uh, uh, and the concession streams, um, I think that you're going to see labor market testing, there, especially those lower paid roles, those lower entry uh, level roles, uh, and probably the uh, highly unionized areas uh, of the workforce as well, which again makes sense because you know, we're in this labor crisis for a period of time, and then we'll have a skills crisis that will follow after that as well. So the government needs those levers to be able to pull. So at this point in time, you still need to post through those labor market testing requirements 
and you need to post two job advertisements through job boards with national reach and Workforce Australia for 28 days with all that information contained within there. So we looked at the problem and we said, you know what, let's just make this super simple for employers and for recruitment consultants and for migration agents and anyone else that has a touch point with it um, and have simplicity as that key um, uh, focus when developing it to make it super simple to go through so that when you're pressing publish, it literally goes out through all of the platforms that you need to and the rule set that sits behind it will actually guide and assist um, uh, the user through completing a job um, advertisement that meets labor market testing and compliance with ease. And you know, you've, you've done it yourself, you time yourself doing it, it literally takes minutes. Um, and we're just about to bring AI through into it as well to actually make it super simple to then create a compelling job advertisement as well. Because that was one of the things I'd always struggle whenever I had a vacancy. And it's like, right, what does a candidate want to see? You know, where do I start building out that job advertisement? And then you put labor market testing into it as well. There's a whole lot more to consider. So we're bringing that one through. And we're, we're looking to launch that on the, the uh, 1st of June at uh, uh, the peak body for the recruitment industry's annual conference, which is uh, next Thursday. Without giving away too much confidential information, what's the uptake been like from a candidate perspective and a business perspective since you guys launched? Yeah, it's, it's actually really good. Um, so <laughs> I was on the sales call today. Um, uh, we've actually beat our targets by 168% today, um, which is great. Um, and yeah, we've got over uh, 700 uh, companies that are actively um, uh, on the platform. Uh, and we literally do have um, you know, between 1,000 and 2,000 applications that are coming through a week. So yeah, we're, we're, we're getting some really, really good traction. Um, and it does also go to show, you know, why um, this is necessary. There's huge interest from the overseas labor market. There's huge interest from Australian employers to employ uh, international talent. There's still some way to go with the education piece uh, around it, um, as you know as well. And I think that's where the migration and advice profession uh, really, uh, really come into the fold. All right, Chris, moving on while we have you and the fact that you're originally from the UK, I feel like you've been in Australia for a lifetime now, but um, I thought it'd be appropriate to discuss the Australia-UK free trade agreement. Uh, we hope to have the signed off by the end of the month. Uh, when it's implemented is another story, but the ball is rolling. There's going to be significant economic benefits, but let's focus on the visa advantages. Chris, I'm interested to hear your thoughts and uh, if you have any interesting insights into how this will benefit from a mobility perspective. When you actually look at the UK, I think um, we actually, uh, as in Australia, um, really time the right to have the conversations with the UK. It was after Brexit, they're looking at trading partners um, and there was a significant majority of um, uh, the voters saw Australia as the number one trading partner, um, which was great. Um, uh, you know, it's tariff free both ways. Um, but I think that Australia is probably going to benefit more than the UK is. Um, you know, the UK, they'll probably get, you know, tax free Ugg boots and, and so on. Um, uh, but coming and, you know, from our perspective, you know, our farmers are going to be able to sell meat that way. Now, now coming this way, where we benefit is, you know, backpackers. I mean, the UK, you know, predominantly that is. Um, you know, the number one source really of backpackers coming this way. Um, when you actually look at backpackers as a whole, uh, all of the countries that are part of those programs, you know, it's like a, a, over a $3 billion industry um, uh, to Australia. So it's massive. Um, and also as well, you know, they fill 250,000 jobs you know, each year. So, you know, from that perspective, really, really good for Australia. Um, and then you would look at it as for UK, Brits. I would have loved to have been able to stay here for three years. Back in the day when I came over here as a heartbroken backpacker in 1999, you know, I didn't have the ability. You know, it was just like one year. Um, so now you've got the ability to come over as a UK national, go back, then come back in the future, then go back, then come back again, or just continue to stay without needing to do farm work. Um, I think that's going to have a reasonable um, impact to a certain extent um, uh, with some employers in regional area. But, you know, with the Palm Scheme and so on and the introduction of that, hopefully that picks up a lot of that. Um, and from what we've been hearing as well with the backpackers bouncing back and coming into the country, um, there's a significant amount that are actually looking for work to extend their work in holiday maker visas. Um, you know, so that's, you know, Irish backpackers and others. Uh, that don't have that concession as per the free trade agreement that we've got. 
from a labor market testing perspective for the UK as well. Obviously, it means you don't have to do labor market testing, which is great. Um, so it streamlines that process as well. Um, and before we actually launched Working Oz, we actually spent a ridiculous amount of money on market research. Um, and that actually fed back to us, and this was back in May uh, 2022, that if you offered an opportunity to someone from the UK and Ireland, there's about 750,000 people that would actually take you up on that. Um, so now, you know, when you look at increased age, 35 years for UK, you know, coming this way, that's highly skilled professionals that are coming in. Um, and it gives them the ability to sort of come in, holiday, you know, work within their profession. Um, and then hopefully we can then attract them to stay. Um, uh, and then, you know, that's where you guys come in, you know, doing the visa and, uh, and making sure. Like Chris, thanks for taking the time to sit down with us today. I'll, um, I'll pop the work in Oz link in the description of this video. Go check it out. If you're either looking for a job or looking to advertise on a, as I said, aesthetically pleasing and user-friendly website. So, um, that'll be there. Chris, look forward to catch up in the future.